Hey everybody, this is Coach Chris from Jersey Wahoos. I'm back for another video. Um, these videos are following up our internal uh, swim concepts clinics. So the first one of these, you, uh, you can see the video is almost up to 5,000 views as of uh, the recording of this. Um, on starts, I compared Caleb Dressel's start to Florent Manadou and Michael Andrew. Um, on this one, we're gonna get into turns because our second clinic, was focused on turns. And I'm gonna go a little bit farther in the past. We'll see how this performs via the algorithm um, because it's not you know, a hot swimmer from today, but I wanted to take a look at um, Ryan Lochte. And maybe if we have time for it, we'll compare, compare him to um, the greatest of all time, Michael Phelps, because there is an interesting comparison to be made when you look at their turning capability. But to me, Ryan Lochte is, um, was just such a dominant force in short course swimming. And of course, uh, to be good in short course swimming, you certainly have to make really good use of the turns. Um, that is, that is sort of the number one, uh, category. And, and, and I'm going to be more focused on the turn portion of this, um, even though certainly the underwater kicking that follows a turn, you could consider that part of the turn. It's really, um, if I have people practicing turns, of course, I'm going to want them to do that part because, because it is. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus more on the mechanics of what happened just before a swimmer touches the wall as they're on the wall transitioning to the other um, side and just as they leave the wall. So I'm gonna sort of put those bounds around what we're gonna talk about. Um, and in many ways, the concepts here are very similar to the concepts for the start. Um, I believe that there are some really universal concepts that cut across basically all swimming skills. And I know I'm not alone in that. There's, there's plenty of people who think the same thing. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and without further ado, share my screen. And then um, we'll get into watching some race video of Ryan Lochte. Um, now I've set this down to a quarter speed, um, turn the volume off so you don't know, you have to hear the slow garbled volume. This is uh, Ryan Lochte setting a, a short course world record in the 200 IM, it's great. Uh, race for viewing because we're going to get to see all kinds of turns. We're going to, be able to see flip turns. We're going to be able to see uh, open turns. We're going to, be able to see a back to breast I am turn, you know, that rare bird. So um, all the stuff you could want in terms of watching a turn. Now, fundamentals of a turn. Okay. Number one, in my mind, is approaching the wall at your absolute top speed. Okay. Anybody that's coached um, knows that a, a sort of novice error when it comes to turns is that, you know, um, swimmers feel like they want to execute technically when they get to the wall. They're nervous about that. They may be nervous about uh, gauging the distance from where they are to the wall. And so they'll tend to adjust their speed and then in, in most cases adjust their speed down to slow down as they come into the wall so that they can hit it um, right. And uh, if you're gonna be really good at turns, you have to practice doing them at your top speed and just carry that speed practically right through the wall and then know how to adjust to the other side. Um, because if you're decelerating, into the turn, it's actually gonna be much harder to start the next length um, at your highest possible speed. And so aside from having a slightly slower turn, it might cost you sort of a, a tenth or two in terms of the time you spend on the wall, but the time lost coming in and off the wall is gonna be exponentially greater than that. So um, as you watch some of these, again, we're watching them at quarter speed, still look for that fundamental in terms of 
the approach. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna play this quarter speed approach and then we'll talk about what has to happen once you've executed an aggressive approach, okay? So this is Lochte up here, you can see. He's just maybe got a slight advantage here in fly. One thing that a lot of swimmers really struggle with in butterfly is hitting the wall on a complete stroke. So you can see here, um, like just ask Michael Kavich, uh, uh, 2008, should have taken another stroke. Um, so his, his arms are coming forward. They're just about to be at full extension and he's pretty close to the wall. This is probably, in all honesty, as far as you could be from the wall with your final stroke and not need to take another stroke, okay? Because he's gonna have, I think, enough momentum when he finishes this stroke such that he won't start to really sink in the water and then have to come up into the turn because if you end up coming up into the turn and and sort of climbing this wall a little bit then you've taken energy that you wanted to use in going back in this direction and you've directed it upwards so again you're costing yourself speed on the subsequent link so watch as his arms come forward here and he basically catches the wall on his on the on the beginning of his body sinking but he hasn't submerged and needing to come back up. He's pretty square on the wall. So he's in a good position there. Now, once you get here, okay, and you can see, again, it's tough with the quality of the video and how far away we are. Not a lot of great videos out there in terms, but you can see he's got his body at full extension here. He's got a really nice line in the water. I think that much is obvious. Now he's gonna have to execute basically in one movement, taking his upper body, Okay, and picking it up, start moving it in the direction he wants to go. Once he's made contact with that wall, the next cue for him is that he can start taking his upper body, okay, and moving it in this direction, the other direction he wants to go. And if he is strong enough in his line, if he's got his upper body connected to his lower body, that's also going to, in one movement, get his feet into the wall. So essentially he's gonna do like a backflip over the water. Um, we think of a freestyle flip turn as a front flip. This is actually, um, this is actually kind of a backflip that he's executing. It's just that uh, everything's a bit reversed. So you know, instead of in terms of a flip turn of his upper body submerging and his legs coming over, it's his upper body that's coming out over the water and the legs are submerged coming underneath you. And you want to basically push at this point straight because that's going to be, um, be the fastest transition and going to be a nice path in for his legs. And watch how quickly he executes. Again, what, this is at quarter speed. Watch how quickly he executes that movement. Boom. Just a few frames <laughs> of quarter speed video. He's gone from hands on the wall to upper body pushed really athletically back. Feet are on the wall. And as he gets those feet on the wall, he can start to turn his body around because he's going to have to get back past um past that side angle to legally make a butterfly turn okay he's going to push off nice and straight there we go he's done twisting he's going to do the underwater portion here another thing just going to throw this in there. I know I said I wouldn't talk too much about the other parts of this, but one thing that he does absolutely beautifully, Ryan Lochte, is his breakouts on this. Okay. I remember talking a little bit about some of the start breakouts and some people, you know, could sort of come up like a submarine. You can see like that part of their upper body comes 
and it actually comes up over the water because it, the, the angle of approach is too steep up to the surface. So they actually come up and crash. If you ever watch a submarine coming up from the depths, you know, that the, the tip of the submarine comes up and then it comes down. Lochte's breakout is just smooth. He's found the right approach angle, just narrow enough that he can come up at the right moment, but there's nothing that sort of plops back down into the water as he goes. Skip, skip ahead here a little bit. Okay, so we're coming up on a open turn. Now he's gonna go butterfly to backstroke. And again, you see, Arms extended, full speed, hands are on the wall. Starts pushing. And you can see his head is in line with his body. Okay, at this point, he's probably almost vertical in the water. He's midway through his turn, starts pushing. And I think we're getting a view as we can't really see him from this far away. We're just gonna have to comment on some of the other swimmers. So here's, here's a guy up here. He hasn't quite, quite gotten his body fully aligned as he goes to initiate the turn. And you can see this hand ends up floating a bit. These guys, these are just less skilled guys, <laughs> still international caliber. Um, short course swimmers, but they're, you know, the hand ends up just floating just a little bit. It's really interesting to watch. Like you see how that hand came here and then it's sort of dragging beneath. And I, if I were coaching him and I saw this on video, I would tell him to really follow all the way through with that elbow so that his hand can sort of meet his shoulder out here because this is just all making it harder for him to make a quick turnaround, right? Here on the wall, I'm gonna have some guys doing some underwater dolphin kick. Zoom ahead here for a backstroke turn. Again, backstroke turn. This is the, the, the blind turn. Although honestly, a lot of these turns are blind if you're swimming properly, right? Um, breaststroke and butterfly, you might have the opportunity to, to look in front of you a little bit, but otherwise you're gonna have your head down looking at the bottom of the pool. And just so like every other stroke, you just have different visual cues. Um, of course, the flags being one of them that lets you know how far away you are from the wall. And one of the reasons it's really important to practice turns at full speed is that you learn unconsciously. You actually put it into your um, unconscious uh, uh, brain synapses, how far away that wall is. And then you can just swim confidently through this part and not have to look and see. You just swim as hard as you can. And you know where the wall is and you make a flip when you get there. And again, Lochte does not break stroke. Same tempo with that arm coming over. Now, flip turn. I'm gonna basically make the same movement, but reverse. You see he's got his whole upper body aligned here and he's gonna take his upper body and he's gonna push it straight down, but not, he's not gonna roll over. The, 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 the number one mistake I see from novice swimmers is that they do, they sort of make a hunchback and they roll over this part. And it actually makes it harder for their lower body to get moving. So he's gonna actually maintain a really, really good posture. And there's a good underwater shot of it here in a second. So push it, see? See, it just pushes his upper body there right down. And instead of the, the one on the other side, there's a, a little bit of a delay, you know, so his legs are, are here, but his upper body is here. Let's see how good that underwater video we can see. Okay, see how well his posture, you could draw a straight line between these two parts, even though he's past halfway done with his turn. And that makes it easier for his legs to come over, okay? And get started doing a dolphin kick. Again, another one of these breakouts, 
no submarining, smooth. You can still see some of the like parts of his, even though he's quote unquote at the surface, parts of his body still have that thin layer of water on it because he's transitioned so gently up to the surface of the water. God, it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful to watch. Now we're gonna come up with the, to the controversial back to breast turn. Eventually, Lochte basically ended up being responsible for a rule change in how you could do um, the back to breast rule. It's known colloquially as, as the Lochte rule and it has to do with whether or not um, you've transitioned appropriately to your stomach after you've done this turn. So this one, I would say, of, of any of these turns that has room for improvement, it's probably this one. It's, and this is like very, I see overall in swimming endemic, um, the level of skill of backstroke turns is just not quite where it is. Sorry, um, backstroke to breaststroke turns, just because people do them more infrequently. Um, and so they get less reps practicing them. And... <laughs> Whoever it was in the 1980s that invented the lunge backstroke finish um, has, uh, it's permeated all the way through swimming to the extent that people very often don't finish their backstroke appropriately back to breast. They make one of these sort of lunging finishes. And it's just like any other stroke, the fundamental. When you put that, when, the, when you have that arm up in front of you, it should be at the wall or almost at the wall. If you have to submerge to like continue motivating your body into the wall, it's too far. So look where his last stroke is here. I can see he's loading it up. It's just, it's just a little too far in my opinion. But he gets his hand on. Flips right through, and gets into the breaststroke. All right, so, you know, you may be thinking like, show me the good, give me the fast people, Chris. So let's look at a Phelps Lochte. Um, Two hundred IM, and just see how he matches up. So this is twenty sixteen Olympic trials. Two hundred IM. We're gonna watch it at full speed here for a second. You got Lochte and Phelps right here in the middle of the pool, lane four to five. And I just want to watch the turn portion of this. Okay, Phelps obviously being the greatest um, out there. Uh, is overall a better swimmer than Lochte, but how do they fare on the turns, right? Because we're just sort of isolating one skill aspect here. So you can see here they are, they're coming into the wall. Michael Phelps got away with a lot of mistakes on turns because he was so good at so many other things. And this is one I wanna highlight right here. Remember I talked about being finishing that length on a full stroke. Watch Phelps here. Look how far away from the wall he is. This is when he's at extension. He's at the T. Okay. The 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 zone for being close enough to just sort of continue what you're doing wall wise is somewhere in here. He's all the way out here. And he's just going to extend that. Now, Lochte did the same thing. So it's very interesting when you're in a race with somebody, sometimes you just get in there and you start competing and you're so locked into what somebody else is doing, you forget to execute on your own strategy. And I would bet that if he had this one to do over again, He'd go, oh, man, I, I wish I'd just taken another stroke and hit that first wall. Maybe I would have beat Michael, right? Because you can't afford to make that kind of mistake 
when you're ra racing the greatest of all time. So both of them just too far from the wall. You can see like the swimmer above them. I didn't get the name. I guess that maybe that's. Um... Anyway, he's he's actually quite a bit behind the two of them. But just based on hitting that wall flush, you can see how close he gets just on the turn portion here. Skip ahead a little bit. Okay, two of them, they're racing backstroke. Really, I mean, both of them world-class 200 backstrokers, so not that surprising to see. You can see these turns, how much sharper they're hitting that back to breast portion of it, okay? Phelps really hit it exact, and um, Lochte's not too far off. I would say Lochte, a little bit more skilled there on the wall. Um, definitely a better pullout for Phelps, okay? Lochte's out swimming Phelps on breaststroke here a little bit. So interesting, the things that, you know, the strengths and weaknesses relative of the swimmers. So Lochte's got some momentum um, just ever so slightly as they transition in here. Again, this is another turn where Lochte breaks his own fundamentals. You see, he's, he's coming up into the wall as he does this one. So here's a stroke. And this is also very frequent when you see a swimmer that's tired, you think, oh, I just don't even wanna take another stroke. I just wanna to get to this wall and get to the next one and it's gonna really cost them. So there he's extended, he's way too far from the wall. And he's just gonna go underneath the water and then come up into the turn. And he's skilled enough that you know, a less skilled swimmer, you'd see their upper body going way out of the water. That's not going to happen to Lochte because he knows what to do from this point, but it's still going to cost him. He's skilled enough even that he can kind of, like you can see, he seems almost as if he's doing the same thing as Phelps, maybe just a tad behind. And now they're off to the races. Dolphin kicking. I think. Lochte got a little advantage off that dolphin kick. Anyway, so that's um, a little bit of a comparison on turns, talking through some of the fundamentals that we've been through. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please comment, please uh, like, please subscribe, do all that stuff to help with the algorithm if you like this content. Um, I'm happy to keep it coming and keep talking through some stuff with all of you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.